So, yes, uh, the reading for today was on uh, trap music, was on, uh, well, it was on hip-hop, but he kind of took it in the direction of trap music and kind of southern-style rap, uh, just because I think it has this um, really distinct sound, yes, um, and it, uh, it really le lends itself to some good uh, lessons in terms of how to build up beats and how to create those, uh, those drum loops. Uh, we're we're going to be doing a little bit of that today, so I'm going to pick up on some elements of the chapter, and I'm going to then kind of take it in a different direction to enhance this, uh, what's offered in the chapter, okay? So then we're not just simply repeating what's in the chapter. So uh, I'm going to be focusing in on the drum sounds, the drum, constructing the drum loop, okay? Uh, so I encourage you, if you didn't check out the chapter, check out the chapter for things in terms of uh, the melodic elements, because we're not really going to be doing much with the melodic elements today, okay? Um, but uh, just, I, I would be remiss to not uh, remind you and refresh your memory the fact that you, you do have a project coming up here before the fall break, right? Getting this project done and uh, underway and then done. Um, today and tomorrow are the days that I suggested dropping by my office hours to play, uh, to have me preview early drafts if you'd like to make sure you're going in the right direction. I've had one or two people come and talk to me already about uh, cover songs. Uh, just be aware that if you're doing a cover song, uh, you need to notify me of that by Wednesday. Okay, uh, that can be as simple as an email, but uh, realize that I am I, I am admittedly woefully behind on my email right now, so you might not get a reply from me right away. Uh, but getting an email notification in by that date qualifies you to have met that deadline. Okay. Uh, and again, my reason for asking for a heads up if you're doing a cover song is that I've had too many students uh, make the mistake in the past of, um, what should we say, deciding that they didn't like their original co composition at the last minute and then deciding that, oh, it'll just be easy to do a cover song. And that, that kind of last minute shifting never really works out as well as you think it does, basically. So I, I want, if you're going to do a cover song, I want you to commit to doing a cover song early. Okay, That's my reason for having a deadline for that. Uh, and then make sure that you're aware that Friday is the deadline for the required draft on Blackboard. I was actually just, as people were walking in, setting up. That's not what I wanted. I want to show you this. Uh, so you should now see, oh, wait, I have to show the link. Show link. Okay, there should now be a link on Blackboard. You see where it says Project 1 down here in the corner, okay? There it is, okay? If you click on that link, there is now a link that says Project 1 Draft. Uh, that's where you will attach your draft, okay? I, I do, for this, want a bounced audio file or a video, okay? I don't want the, the live set. I want a recording of what you've been doing, okay? So that you can give me a taste of, of where you're going, what direction you're going, okay? Uh, and again, the reason for this is that next week, Monday and Wednesday, I come in with no agenda other than helping you with your projects, okay? So the drafts on Friday are so that I can listen over the weekend and come in on Monday and Wednesday knowing who needs my help the most and who I can kind of leave alone and let you work for those two days, basically, okay? Uh, that's my main reason for doing this, okay? So I can, I can target and focus my energies um, on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, there was a question about coming on Wednesday if you're done. Um, have a conversation with me on Monday before you do that, okay? But definitely commit to being here on Monday and working. I will take attendance on Monday, okay? Um, Wednesday, I'll be a little more loose because I realize some people may have wrapped up and might want to focus on other things. Is that cool? Okay. Um, uh, on the note of absences, I have not made a decision yet about what I'm going to do with absences. I, I still want to think about that. And I've, I was uh, working on uh, some other projects over the weekend, so I didn't have time to kind of come up with a solution. So stay tuned on that note that I, I teased on Friday. Uh, the other thing on Friday, I, 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 because of these projects that I'm working on, I haven't had a chance to edit and post the video for Friday, so that will be forthcoming here this week, okay, so look for that as well. Uh, reading responses in, in, let's say, well, before I, any questions about Project 1, absences, next week, okay, uh, this doesn't... That doesn't mean you can't ever ask a question. If you think of a question later, feel free to ask that, that question, okay? Reading response. And looking at your reading response, it looks like most of you felt comfortable with this. This one was very heavy on the walk you through these steps and do this thing to produce this oral outcome, okay? Um, and so if you didn't read the chapter sitting in front of live, uh, I would encourage you to do that at some point just to kind of get through the workflow of the process. 
I did find it was a little, in myself walking through it, it was a little goofy, some of the descriptions in terms of the, the actual building of the percussion loops. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to focus on that today uh, for our demo. And then, like I said, I'm going to start there with that specific instruction where he builds up that, that two-bar trap music, uh, that trap beat, okay? Um, and then I'm going to go in a different direction and show you some other skills that are not covered in the chapter that have not been covered in your reading so far. So there is, uh, I don't go into this thinking that I'm just going to recap and parrot what's in the chapter. I'm going to go in a little bit different direction once we get that beat built, okay? Um, that's the reason for the samples that I want you to download. That's the reason for um, having the keyboards in front of you, okay? Um, so, I don't know, were there any other questions? I think the only ones I saw were... Uh, <laughs> A rhythmic, and there was a question about stabs. What are stabs? Okay. Not, yeah, stab. There's not. They're stabbing with a knife, but in musically, what is a stab, Katie? Like orchestral music that's not really like actually how the orchestra doing. Okay. Yeah, we're on the right track with orchestra, Daniel. Okay, it's a cut of audio, it's harsh, it's orchestral, we're, we're circling around it, yes. Yeah. It's like um, a repeated phrase of like, that's like brass or string instruments are playing, and it's just a, it's like a constant thing that's going through the track. It's like a more... Yeah, I, well, okay, so there, there, we can have kind of like a, a brass stab, basically. It is kind of, it's got a punchy quality to it, but I want to focus on the orchestral stabs. Uh, really, the history of this goes back to, uh, so we're going to digress into a little bit of a history lesson here. Sorry. Uh, let me launch iTunes. Let me search for Planet Rock. Do you guys know this song? Okay. This is really the, the first orchestral stab. Also featuring an 808, which I'll get to in a minute. And the 2005 is a reissue. That's not the original date on this. It's a sample of an orchestra hitting a chord, and it's it's isolated out of its original concept text, and just it's a little burst of an orchestral sample. It's kind of buried in this mix, but it becomes a theme that gets picked up in other uh, hip hop examples. Okay, so that that use of the orchestral stab. Okay, it's an orchestra hitting a chord, and it's kind of a burst of sound that way. Okay, um, sorry, it took me a minute to find it there, uh, and I'll have to. Edit that out of the recording, otherwise Africa Bomada will collect royalties. Uh, the other thing um, that is mentioned is the 808, yes? This uh, lovely uh, classic piece of gear. Do you guys know the 808? Or you've heard those numbers said in that order, right? Okay. Um, it's, it's the area code in Hawaii, but it's also this piece of equipment. When people talk about an 808 in hip-hop or electronic music, this is what they're talking about, this Roland Rhythm Composer, which was the TR-808, okay, so most people just refer to it as an 808, um, but it's capable of producing uh, multiple rhythms. I can play this for you here. Do these sounds, are these sounds familiar? Yes? Okay. Most people these days, when they're using an 808, they're typically not using an original piece of gear. They're usually using samples from the 808 or samples that are evoking the 808. Okay. But in its original context, it was this interface where you could, you basically, you're, you're looking at 16th notes in a 4 4 pattern, basically, and you could then punch the buttons to create a rhythmic pattern on the actual 808 device. Okay. 
this is another one that has been emulated inside the browser. So if you uh, point your browsers, and I'll tweet this link out later, uh, to this address, you can actually run an 808 right in the browser and get a sense of the original interface because there's the sounds of the 808, which get reused and recycled and repurposed in multiple genres. And then there's the interface that the 808 created for actually composing these rhythmic uh, loops. Okay, uh, And I want you to be at least somewhat familiar with this, this 808 interface so you can uh, get a sense of it. Okay, And this is a pretty faithful reproduction right down to the, the tones of the reds and the orange and the yellows uh, on the buttons. Okay. Um, but you can try this out at, at another time. Uh, again, I'll send this link out to you guys to be able to check this out. Um, and maybe also a link to that video so you can hear some of the, the, the common loops that have been produced with the 808. Okay? Any questions about that? So this is, that's your history lesson for today. Okay? Let's di you guys ready to dive into Ableton then? Because we're going to be not using this interface, but we're going to be using some of the sounds of the 808. That's where the, the chapter kind of comes in and, and meets us. Um, we're also going to be looking a little bit at some of the extra controls that you have for MIDI clips or, or audio clips. Okay, um, So I'm going to get into a little bit of these follow actions that you see right here, which you may not have seen because you have to... There, there, there were some, there's an L and an E button in your clip menu that actually... Uh, shows you this launch in this envelope. He mentions the envelope in the chapter. I want to cover that a little bit, but I also want to cover the launch uh, follow commands that you can use here. Uh, we're going to get into using the impulse instrument, which allows us to drop in audio samples and then trigger them using MIDI uh, clips. And then also, the if we have time, get into the simpler instrument, which is also for manipulating and controlling audio clips using MIDI. Okay. Uh, so if you haven't already, go ahead and launch live. Uh, I'm a little, um, let's see, it, I, I, I usually like to prepare a starting point for you, but since this uh, lesson has to do with building loops, we are actually starting from a blank live set, okay, with nothing in it, okay? There is no starting point other than the samples that I had you download, okay? So <clears throat> we're not going to be using audio today, so you can actually go ahead and delete these two audio tracks that come in by default. We will be using the MIDI tracks, however, so go ahead and leave those. Uh, and the instrument that he has us uh, focus in on is the 808 drum sound, okay, which you can find up here in the corner if you go to the drums <coughs> category in the browser. You should be able to scroll down and you'll see this kit core 808, okay. And hopefully you've realized that there is a little preview right here in the browser for you, okay? So when you click on these instruments, often they will have a preview so you can get a sense of what they sound like. It doesn't play if this little headphone icon is not, this little headphone icon right here is not in blue. When it's in blue, every time you click on something, it'll give you a little bit different sound, okay? Okay. And I'll just mention the, the 909 is kind of the later iteration of the 808. It's actually by Roland, and instead of it being synthesized drum sounds, they were actually sampled drum sounds, so it sounded more real, in quotes, okay? That's the, the uh, iteration, the further iteration, okay? So once you get the 808 loaded onto your track, which you simply just drag down to the, the menu, to the, um, to the instrument signal chain there, okay? Uh, so I'm just, I just drag this kit cord down to the, the, the track or over here to the track in the session win window. You should actually be able to use these eight pads to fire off uh, 808 sounds. Is that working for everybody? Play around with it. Make sure you can hear where they are. The, the kick drum is in the, the lower right hand corner, the lower left hand corner. Excuse me. The the the, the snare is then two uh, buttons over. You also have the open and closed hi hats, and then there's that iconic 808 clapping sound. Okay, that's the rim shot there. Okay, so right out of the gate, this keyboard maps to the same 
uh, instrument to, to the same pitches, okay? Uh, so these, these drum pads over here are actually mapped to specific MIDI pitches. Those MIDI pitches have been already mapped to the sounds in the 808 kit in live, okay? And most of the drum kits map to these uh, keys, okay, which makes it very handy to be able to use this and these eight pads over here to uh, construct drum kits or drum loops, okay? So, um, so let's get started here by first double clicking into a, a, an empty slot, okay, so that we create a MIDI clip here. So you should have the piano roll after you double clip into uh, double click into an empty slot, okay. Um, and we're going to start off by inserting the claps. Let's see, where's our claps? There it is, okay. Um, and if you scroll down, let's see here, can I, yeah, you should see that it lights up on the piano roll every time you hit that key. It'll even say clap 808 there. Okay. So in the chapter, he talks about building a two-bar loop. Right now, uh, by default, if you just double-click, we have a one-bar loop. How do we create? How do we extend this to be a two-bar loop? Yeah. Okay. So we can actually grab the handle over here. If we just simply click and drag this handle, we can actually extend it. Okay. That's one strategy. The other strategy is down here in the clip uh, information, you should see that it says something about length. I see this where it says length right here. And if you type in two, zero, zero, it will actually create a two bar loop for you. Okay. This works for whatever length loop you're trying to create. Okay. So uh, if you're someone that doesn't like clicking and dragging and you like just typing in numbers because of, because of the precision of that. Okay. Uh, you can do that as well. Okay, so I've now got a two bar loop. Oh, actually, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's two bars. Make sure these are in sync. Yeah, okay. Um, now, we can actually use the pencil to pencil in our claps on two and four, right? Okay, so the pencil tool is up here at the top for those of you that, are, that like, prefer the GUI, prefer mousing around, up here at the top, this pencil. It's also available to you by the B key. So the B key on the, your keyboard creates the pencil tool. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my claps on beats two and four. Okay, and if you've got that now, you can fire the clip. Okay, now. It's defaulted to a tempo of 120. Anybody remember what what tempo he gives us in the chapter to create this nice, slow, <coughs> dirty south sounding beat? Yeah, 75. Okay, so go ahead and go up to the top right hand corner, and instead of 120, go ahead and type in 75. So we get a nice, slow trap beat. Okay. So we've got it playing on two and four now, okay? The next thing we need is to actually add in the bass sound. And in the bass sound, he mentions, uh, this is where I think his description maybe needed a little bit of expanding, or I guess there, because there's two authors, right? I don't know which one is responsible for writing this section of the chapter, right? He mentions, oh yeah, it should just be a 3-2 rhythm, or sort of like a clave found in Afro-Cuban uh, music, right? Uh, and some of you read that maybe and said, what? Uh, but some of you are like, oh yeah, I know exactly what he's talking about. So those that knew exactly what he was talking about when he said 3-2 Cuban rhythm clave, what is he talking about? Who, explain it to the rest of us. Christian. Um, in, the, in the first measure, you're going to hear three claves. In the uh -huh. second measure, you're going to hear those you know, two clave beats. But it's like the, 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 the. Yeah, so this dut, 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 okay. Victoria, you were kind of nodding your head. Is that what you're going to add? or? Okay, anybody else want to add something to that? When you hear it, you'll probably recognize it, but it it bears slowing down just to explain it, okay? Because this rhythm shows up in a lot of different musical traditions, shall we say, okay? 
In uh, Afro-Cuban music, music, it's often called the clave rhythm. In uh, New Orleans jazz, it's sometimes referred to as the third line. If you've heard that terminology. Uh, but if we, let's, I don't know, should we do this? Let's do this interactively. So if we, if we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in all my quarter notes just so I can hear it. Okay, so if I can have quiet from y'all's computers, I'm going to play this over the speaker so we can hear the quarter notes. Uh, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay. Try it. You have hands. Uh, we're off, but okay. Wow. Okay, this is why we're in electronic music and we let the computer take care of the beat for us, right? Okay, so we're a little bit off, but if we want to record that with our bass drum, our. Okay. We can go ahead and actually record into this MIDI clip that we've already created, okay? This is where I actually lost a little bit of time myself working through this chapter because if, you're, if you haven't already figured this out, there's actually two record buttons in live. This is important because you will lose a lot of time if you mess this up, okay? There's actually two record buttons for live, guys, okay? One is for recording in the arrangement, which is where I have the mouse currently. But over here is for recording into the session view, in this track view, okay? This button over here next to the word new will actually record into this clip, okay? This one will record a continuous multi-measure and stop until you stop kind of uh, clip. It creates a new clip, okay? This is the one you want if you want to add an overdub into your MIDI clip that you've been created, okay? Which is the one that we want currently, okay? So go ahead and click on the, the circle that's empty, the circle that's not filled in, and you'll notice that your clip, the, the play button turns red, okay? That's because we are now recording over, uh, we are now recording over the MIDI information that we already put in, okay? So I'm going to create this uh, third line beat here. Okay. I'll turn it down so you guys can hear it. Try that out, okay? Because I want you to be able to record into the MIDI clip and create an overdub rhythms like this, okay? See if you can create this, and I'm going to quickly delete my other claps so it sounds a little more uh, like our trap rhythm that we're supposed to. Okay. Once I remove the claps back out, you should be able to create this, this third line, this clave rhythm with your bass, with your kick. I'm going to save this while I'm...
Okay. So it looks like everybody's got this third line, this clave rhythm on their, their kick drum, okay? Uh, and if you didn't practice that, again, I, I encourage you to practice by recording into the clip because it's, 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 it's a different feel to actually interactively record the rhythm into the clip, okay? Uh, now, some of you are asking about timing, right? Your timing is a little off. Maybe you were, you were late on a beat. You were early on a beat. How do you quantize this, right? That's the quantizing is the um, uh, the, the the term that we use, right, for snapping our, our MIDI events into place. Okay. Um, so I can actually click on a specific line here. Okay. Uh, and these layers represent different MIDI pitches. Okay. I can click on the, 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 the pitches for my kick drum and I can actually, if I control click, I get to the uh, menu that allows me to get to quantize. See that word there? Okay. I can hit quantize and, oh, by default, it, what did it quantize to? It quantized to 30 second notes. I don't know, maybe I like that. That one's late, okay. Sometimes with quantize, you have to let it snap and then adjust, basically. So I'm gonna adjust this one back over to my downbeat. Okay, pretty good so far, okay. So I've got my clap, I've got my kick, okay. What's next, what's the third element to our trap beat here? Anybody remember from the chapter? Hmm? Rim, okay, or the hi-hat. Okay, so you uh, these are on your pads here, the upper right-hand corner, these two. You've got closed hi-hat, okay. You can either, either interactively tap these in, okay. Or you can go back to using the pencil. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the pencil real quick. If I switch my grid to 16th notes, I can be assured, let's see, so again, um, okay, can you turn that down a little bit? Yeah, okay, that's, okay. So uh, under fixed grid, okay, I can uh, set it to 16th notes so that when I use the pencil tool, I'm assured that it's going to be on the 16th note. I'm going to leave some space here to use an open hi-hat. I'll use an open hi-hat there. Uh, and I can actually switch. Where's the open hi-hat? There. So I'm going to pencil this one in just because I want it to be absolutely... Okay, and if I hit play now, okay, are we getting a little more trappy? Okay, um, in addition to the 16th note rhythm, we might want to have a, a 32nd note roll at that point, and that's where you can go back to the fixed grid, change it over to 32nd note, and you'll see you'll get an even finer <laughs> grid here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Okay. And again, control, I went to 32nd. That's what, I, uh, that's what gave me this little bit of more grid. And if I go back over, I can actually just double click some things and add in some 32nd notes. Again, with the pencil tool. Whoop. So this way, okay. 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 Great, we've got our trap beat. Excellent, okay. So this is what was in the chapter. Here's where I want to kind of take a left turn and take you in another direction. Is everybody comfortable with what we've done so far? If you're not comfortable with what we've done so far, it's in the chapter. You can kind of walk back through this and get this, this trap rhythm, okay? Um, so I've got basically three elements here, yes? My kick drum, 
my clap and my hi hat, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna group the closed and open hi hat together and call them one instrument. Because typically we experience the hi hat as being uh, one element of the overall kit, both open and closed. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna think about these as my three layers of my beat. Okay. I want to first go to my clip and I'm gonna rename it so that it says full beat. Okay. Okay. Uh, and one element that's discussed in the chapter, let's see, is that I can actually uh, manipulate the envelope on top of this. Yes. Okay. I can actually control. Uh, uh, I can I can create control data that that changes over time over the duration of the clip using an envelope function. Okay. That in uh, in uh, let's see in my MIDI clip. Okay. So clip on click on the MIDI view. Okay. To get to the envelope, you need to find this little E, which is kind of hidden in black, okay? So click on that, and you're going to see an envelope show up that's kind of layered on top of your MIDI notes, okay? <coughs> right now it's set up for glue. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing for that, but what I'm interested in is under, let's see, whoa, come on. I might have to zoom out in order to get to it. Uh, you've got two drop-down menus here, okay? The first one is going to tell it what type of control you want, and all the way at the top is what's called MIDI control, okay? That's what I'm interested in, so go ahead and in the first menu, click on it, go all the way to the top to MIDI control, okay? And then the second menu at the top, there should be something called pitch bend, okay? The pitch bend is actually this wheel on the keyboard here, okay? It goes up and down, okay? And it snaps back into the center. Okay, it's all the way on the left hand side of your keyboard, okay? The pitch bin wheel, okay? We can actually record control data from this pitch bin wheel into the clip so that it stays with the clip. We get pitch manipulations over time in our clip, repeating over and over again. Not just MIDI note information, but the pitch bin information, okay? Uh, and the pitch bin. When you push it up, it pushes the pitch up. When you push it down, it pushes the pitch down. That's part of the reason why it snaps back to the center because when you let go, you want the pitch to lock back into place. It's natural state, okay? So what we're gonna do here is first hit the same record button, okay? And before we were tapping these to create pitch information, but now, overwriting it. So I have to stop the recording here. Okay, and if I stop, okay, uh, I had to stop the recording because when I uh, record it, it will overwrite whatever I did the last time through the loop, okay? But now if I listen to my rhythm and if you try this out, you hear those pitch manipulations that are happening in, in the percussion? Okay. It just adds another element to it, okay? You can also use the pencil tool to draw in here, okay? To draw pitch control information, but I'm pointing out to you the fact that you actually have a, con a more interactive tool at your disposal here, the pitch bin wheel, okay? And you can actually create some, some changes there in your, uh, in your, in your, your trap beat, okay? Um, so now, th so that's the uh, pitch bin information recording that in. Everybody cool with that? That's one element to add variation to your MIDI clips, okay? The next thing I want to do, I want to actually work on the, with the follow command, okay? Which I've alluded to in, the pa in past classes, but I want to kind of lock down actually what it's doing, okay? Um, and looking at the time, man, I've got, I've got, I may have to cover some of this on Wednesday and eat into my max time. Okay, uh, because I, I want to get to impulse and some other stuff there. So uh, stay tuned here. Okay, so we've got our full beat right in the MIDI clip. I want to now isolate those three layers that I have in my my clip. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and option click drag to create three more versions of this right, so that I can create variation. And then the first one, if I double click on it, I'm going to Get rid of the envelope, and I'm going to I'm going to make this one hi hat only. So if I just simply click on the clap and hit delete, click on the kick and add delete, I now have just my hi hat part. 
And again, I need to rename this because I named it full beat. This is now hi hat only. Okay. Go back to my clip. And once you realize what I'm doing, if you want to kind of move ahead and do that, please do. Okay. I'm going to create a clap only version by deleting the other ver the other pieces. I'm going to rename it clap only. And then I'm going to create a kick only version. So delete my hi-hat, delete my clap sound, okay. And now I've got a kick only. Again, I want to rename it kick only. Bless you. So this is what you want to end up with, okay. You've got a clip that represents your full beat with everything in it. And then three other clips that are just your isolated elements, your hi-hat only, your clap only, your kick only. And again, these are, I realize these are just names. You have to actually go into the MIDI. You can't just rename it and have Ableton use some sort of smart feature in the background to, to play just that. Okay, it's not that, it's not that intuitive yet. Okay? You do need to go in and mani manually delete the, the different layers in these clips. Okay? But this is what I'm after. Why would I do this? Why would I want to delete parts? And have different clips. I can output them separately, or because I can now fire these individually, right? Yeah, I want to build variation into my my arrangement, right? Okay, so being able to construct the full beat and then build versions that are different layers. And if I wanted to actually create even more variation, I could have a version that's just the hi-hat and the kick without the clap. I could have, right, I could create three more variations, right? If I deleted the clap and left the hi-hat and the bass, if I deleted the, the, the kick and left the clap and the hi-hat, or if I deleted the hi-hat and I left the, the, the clap and the kick, okay? I could get three more variations out of this. But in the sa for the sake of time, I'm sticking with just three isolated la layers, okay? Now, I can interactively play this and create my arrangement, or I can actually automate randomization here of moving between these clips, okay? This is, for me, one of my favorite features of live, because I can actually set up a, a track to, to create its own set of variations, okay? And that's actually set up through the follow command. So go back to your MIDI clip down here, okay? I had you earlier click on the E for the envelope. If you now click on the L, you'll get the launch controls here. And right down here at the bottom is what's called the follow action. Okay? The first part of the follow action is when in the clip you actually want it to execute this follow action. Since we have a two bar clip, I actually want this follow action to execute two bars into it. You can do this independently. But I actually want to switch this so that it's at two bars, zero beats, zero fractions of beats, okay? So this follow action, this first step in the follow action is how far into the clip to actually execute the follow action, okay? But then what I can do is I can choose to have live do something at the end of the clip. And if you click on this drop-down list, you'll see that I've got some other, some, uh, a few options here to choose from. One of them is to have it actually stop and don't play anymore. The other one is to have it actually play again, which is actually what I want to be my first uh, default action. But in my second, right, you see the second drop down is actually a, a re repeat of this, okay? I can actually give it two choices at the end of the clip, okay? My first one is going to be to play again. My second one, I'm actually going to have this full beat choose another clip in the track. So choose other here, okay? Make sure I'm not, oh, I'm on the kick only. Uh, I don't want to be on the kick only. I want to be on the full beat. That's the one I want. Sorry. Zoom in. Two bars. Okay. My first action, I want it to be to play again. My next action, I want it to pick something else. One other clip in the track. Okay. And then this bottom is the ratio between those two choices. If I give it a one-to-one -one ratio, I'm effectively saying I've got a 50-50 chance. At the end of this, it's either going to play again 50% of the time or it's going to pick another clip 50% of the time. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do with my full beat. <laughs> then under hi-hat, I'm going to choose, let's see, where to go? I'm at my hi, no, I'm not on my hi-hat only. Let's see, go to hi-hat only. 
I'm going to, again, set this up with a follow action after two bars. Uh, I'm going to have it 50% of the time. Now, I, actually, I'm going to make it 100% of the time go back to the first clip, which is my full beat, right? Okay. So 100% of the time after it plays just the hi-hat only, it's going to go back to the full beat. Okay. Make sense? And I'm going to repeat that with all my other individual layers. The clap only, I'm going to say, after two bars, go back to the first clip in my track. And with my kick only, I'm going to have it uh, go back to the first clip 100% of the time. That's what that 1 to 0 basically means. Once you set this up properly, I can now fire this clip and watch what happens. I'm doing, I'm touching nothing. It's, it's deciding what to do all by itself. Decided to play it again. Decided to play it again. <coughs> oh, the clap's gonna happen now. So, I, I've now automated through random processes, variation in my track, yes? Okay. This is a very powerful feature, and there's a lot you can do in this to build kind of internal variation in smart tracks, if you will, that are going to vary themselves over time without any further input from you, okay? Um, this has applications in ambient music, this has applications in these kind of hip hop tracks, uh, this has application in the rock tracks, basically. You can use this in any genre, if you will. But this is a very, very, very powerful feature, yes? Okay. Uh, so instead of it being a loop that mindlessly repeats two bars over and over again, I can now build in internal variation to my track. Make sense? Okay. Uh, uh, I could probably spend the rest, I, I could spend another 50 minutes talking about what you could do with that basically, but does that help set up exactly what that is and what you can do with that? Okay. I've got three minutes and way more content. Uh, let's see, let's get to those sounds files that I had you download and then maybe I'll on Wednesday actually talk about the, the simpler instrument, okay. So on the next MIDI track, go ahead and pick an instrument and choose the impulse instrument, okay? So I'm on the next MIDI track over, number two. I'm gonna pick the impulse instrument and drag it down, okay? And remind me, did he cover impulse on our, our uh, yes, okay, so you got a little bit of a, 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 an idea here, okay? Um, so we've been working with the 808 and those 808 sounds, right? But we can now, we could actually replace those 808 sounds with our own sounds, right? That's what the impulse lets us do, okay? So I'm going to take this full beat and I'm going to option click drag it over to my impulse track. So I've got that beat that I already constructed with my 808 sounds. Uh, but I'm now going to disable the 808 track and I'm going to create something else with a new set of sounds, okay? So this is where if you've got the, let's see, I've got to switch over to the finder uh, and find these. You should have some sounds, right, this 10003 sounds, okay, and I'm going to, uh, let's see, how did I set this up, I'm going to drag over the huge drum for my kick, I'm going to drag over, uh, and this just works with the finder, once you, find, once you unzip the file in the finder, you can simply drag these in. Uh, dull hit two was my replacement for the clap, and then my uh, dull hit one was for the closed hi hat, and my high rattle was for open hi hat. So a little bit different configuration there. Okay. So I can now <coughs> play this with my new sound files. Although, I first need to actually change the MIDI pitch information, okay? 
So by default, the 808 is using the C1, D sharp 1, F sharp 1, A sharp 1. If I just simply get into the, the MIDI uh, clip here and drag them up to, oh, let's see, undo. Uh, let me get off of the pencil tool. I can just drag them up to the proper pitches that are now mapped. And what I like about this is I can actually see the name of my sound files in the clip view here. Notice that on the piano roll here, they've actually named our sound files. Uh, there, okay. So now I've got it mapped to those sound files. And if I play it now, I've got a totally different feel, yes? Same rhythm, different sounds, I get a different feel, okay? Okay, I'm gonna have to pick it up here on Wednesday, okay? Which means I might not get to very much Max this week, but maybe I can work with Casey and we can do Max and the pedal on Friday. So we're gonna kind of bleed this week, okay? But I think, because I think there's a lot more here in terms of tools you can do with live for sampling and sound files, okay? Go ahead and pack up. I will see you all on Friday, or see you on Wednesday. Make sure you get started on project one. Uh, I'm going to be in my office uh, at 1030 today if you want to drop by and play something for me.